Hey y'all, Michelle Johnson with Have Color Will Travel and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to talk about my favorite discovery from this fall's adventures in art making that I've had. Um, heavy gloss gel. Now I'm, I'm not discovering heavy gloss gel for the first time. <laughs> and if you are, if this is the first time you've ever heard of heavy gloss gel, this is an acrylic medium. In painting, in acrylic painting, there are mediums. And those mediums usually, they're usually pale in color like this one. That's the color of, that's a clear color that you're seeing. The, the uh, heavy gloss gel is white while it's uh, wet and then it turns clear once it's dry. Mediums are applied to paint or mixed with paint or put onto a surface uh, that you're painting on and it changes the viscosity, the uh, transparency, or the texture of your paint. Heavy gloss gel, as you can see, if you can see from the label, is designed to thicken up your paint so that you can create peaks and shapes, um, all those kinds of things. I've used this on canvases where I place it onto the canvas first and create a texture and then paint on top of it. You can also mix it with your paint prior to painting and then paint with some really thick, goopy paint, like uh, frosting, essentially. This is very much like frosting. Uh, in texture, not in flavor. Don't eat it. Um, but also mediums in acrylic painting are make really good adhesives. So if you're familiar with matte medium or uh, gloss, gloss medium, uh, glazing medium, all of those different mediums, because acrylic is basically like a plastic based art material, uh, they become really good adhesives. So let me fast forward to why this is my new favorite discovery, even though it's not new to me at all. I had begun bookbinding this year. I fell in love with a tutorial. I took a class uh, with Chantel Lee during Sketchbook Revival, and this sketchbook uh, pattern, I guess, or style of sketchbook, it is a flat lay sketchbook style. And I was super excited to create these. I went through the process, and I think this was one of the first ones I made. It's a uh, six by nine, so nine by 12 paper. I was very excited to begin creating these, but I had one ingredient on the uh, tutorials materials list that I didn't have, and that was book binding glue. I had everything you see here, paper, cover stock, um, this is waxed linen. I even had this special curvy needles that you use to go in and out. And I guarantee you, if you have never tried bookbinding with the curvy needle, it'll change your life. Straight needles for bookbinding are no fun at all. But I didn't have any glue, no bookbinding glue. I live in the middle of nowhere. If I don't have an art supply, rather than trying to get to an art store, which is basically a full day's journey, I try to go into my studio and see, hey, what might I be able to substitute instead of that particular item? enter in heavy gloss gel. I wanted to know, would that work? I was watching her, because this was an online tutorial, use uh, bookbinding glue and it looked very similar to this. I also knew that heavy gloss gel makes things, you know, kind of protected waterproof. And I'm like, why would I not want the side of my book to be waterproof? That sounds great. And lo and behold, heavy gloss gel makes a really great bookbinding glue. I just went to town making these books and I am super happy with the results. But the one thing I didn't like about the tutorial was that the cover was just made with cover stock. So this one's made with cover stock, it's paper. This is a handmade paper that I had that I, re um, my favorite color is green. So I was very excited to make this hand, uh, use this handmade paper as the cover of my sketchbook. This was some mixed media paper that's really, really thick. Almost, I want to say this almost like a folder. You can hear that, like a manila folder on both sides. But even so, that these were thick papers, I kind of felt like I wanted a little more durability to the outside of my book. So after completing all of their spines and having it be so successful, my brain started to wonder, this didn't warp any of the paper because this is really, really thick. It does not have a lot of moisture to it. What would happen if I 
painted the covers of my sketchbook. Could I turn paper, essentially, into a vinyl-like material? Well, the answer, I'm excited to say, is yes. <laughs> you can turn paper into vinyl with thin layers of heavy gloss gel. Now, before I want to try, and I'm gonna try this with you on a sketchbook. I haven't done that just yet, but I've done it to some spare paper from one of the sketchbooks. I had to cut the paper down to size because these are 12 by 12 sheets and I needed nine by 12 sheets. And uh, this result makes me incredibly happy. Look at the flexibility of that. This is, I think I probably coated this with two, I think if I remember right, two coats of heavy gloss gel which means I'll probably want to do three coats onto the cover of my book, but we'll just have to see. I will make that decision as I go along, so let's give it a try. Before using the heavy gloss gel on this sketchbook cover, this is another handmade sketchbook, I wanted to add a little more personalization to the cover. I am taking some Blix Black Cat ink and using my dip pen, and I'm hand inscribing a reminder that I wrote during my time taking the artist way last semester. It was a really powerful collection of words, and I'm gonna put it down, the full thing, down in the description for you to read at a more leisurely pace. This is also gonna give me an opportunity to see if heavy gloss gel over India ink is a good idea. This particular India ink is very waterproof. Now you'll see here, I'm taking a moment to kind of evaluate the cover. Is it finished? Is the voted sticker enough? Do I need something in that really large blank space? My decision was yes. So I just added some decoration around and about, and you'll see later, I also added a, a unicorn stamp and another sticker, because I really wanted this cover to be special as it was my very first handmade sketchbook. So before I begin, let me tell you about how I've prepped my surface. This is waxed, um, freezer paper. I get it at the store in these big rolls. I find it invaluable in so many different ways. Why I'm choosing this rather than regular paper? Because it's already got um, kind of a, a waxy surface. Well, it is waxed. It's got a, a smooth surface that I'm not going to not get any of the heavy gloss gel uh, off the edge. This way it's easy to slice through. It will make, it's almost like a sticker when it's finished. So this is what I've been using whenever I've done the sides of my book. I also just have a regular old lid from, this is from a yogurt container. As you can tell, I think you can see from the glinting. I've used this multiple times on both sides for heavy gloss gel. So it's, it's just really, really useful. You don't have to put it on anything special. I've brought out a couple of flat brushes uh, this is the largest piece of paper that I've tried to do this on. You know, this is very small, it's very big <laughs> in comparison. And I know that speed is of the is really important, so I'm thinking I might use this larger brush. I don't think it's going to be a problem with, because uh, I like this brush. This is a Princeton um, Snap brush. It's a really fun uh, watercolor brush. I think it should be okay if I decide midway that it's not I'm going to quickly clean it and switch to one of my uh, lesser brushes here not lesser I shouldn't say that but they're more designed for acrylic tends to be watercolor brushes are a little more sensitive than acrylic brushes but this is the I don't have a larger acrylic brush so this is also the first sketchbook that I made this is also a handmade sketchbook from the class that I was talking about it is almost done, which is so hard for me to believe. I'm, I've never finished a sketchbook this quickly. I think it has something to do with the fact that I made it myself. I think this has had enough time to dry. Um, so let's see what happens. I'm pretty much confident that the stickers are not gonna have a problem staying in place. I'm not 100% confident about my ink. This is waterproof ink as I said before, so yeah, I'm taking a little bit of a risk on camera, but uh, let's see what happens. And here we're gonna, this is the best part, or the most um, satisfying to look at part. I always love to do this too. It's like, you can never not get a little seal of acrylic stuff on your, the lids. I think it's fun to peel it off. See what I mean? Here we go, frosting. 
don't need it though. I always try to squeeze out just a little bit of a medium uh, before starting something like this. The reason being that you can always squeeze out more if you need more, but if I had had too much out, I wasn't going to be able to put it back into the container. So there's no reason to just gloop out loads and loads of medium heavy gloss gel while you're doing a project like this. Just add more as you need it. What I'm doing here is trying to make the thinnest, gentlest layer possible. I didn't want to disturb the stickers. I didn't want to disturb the ink that I used on the um, reminder poem that I put down or on the unicorn stamp. And as you can see, the heavy gloss gel didn't have an effect on any of those things. The stickers didn't get warped, the ink didn't budge, and the stamping ink didn't budge. Ideally, you're not supposed to go back and forth like I did. I was trying to just leave a smooth layer, but the mistiness of the white parts made me nervous and I kept going back. Thankfully, it didn't actually make it worse. It still stayed smooth. Okay, I'm going to immediately stick this in some water because I don't want to stop the camera so I can talk to you guys. But I really, I mean, I'm like just never leave your brushes like this, but I'm only going to talk for a little bit longer. And then I'm going to rinse this out fully under the sink. Before I let this dry, so I've got my first layer, I'm just going to run this old pair of tweezers that I keep around for just this purpose. They're horrible at their job of tweezing, but they are great at little tasks like this. Because this may take a while to dry, and I want it to dry fully before I think about putting another coat on this. And I know you could see me. I I, when I see it look like that, I want to just make it clear and I don't need to, it's going to dry clear. It's just the inside of me being like, ah, that's foggy. I want to fix it. So let me show you. I have another one that I did. Where did I set it? Here we go. Notice how this paper did such a beautiful job. It didn't buckle. It's lying flat. It's not because of anything I magically did to it. It's not because I'm using on wax paper. This is another one that I um, did for myself off camera. This is a sketchbook. Um, it's 50% 100% uh, cotton water paper and 50% 100% cotton drawing paper. Um, but I made the outside cover uh, this really cute scrapbook paper that I still had left over from my scrapbooking days because who wouldn't love this design? It's so retro. Uh, but I found that this particular paper, which, you know, these papers don't come with labels that tell me the paper grain, like, or not the grain, the GSM, how, how heavy, how thick this is. This, while it did respond well enough to the heavy gloss gel, it did leave some warpage. You can tell here. I have pressed this sketchbook under heavy bricks overnight after the heavy gloss gel is fully dried, not before, because <laughs> then I would have had um, bricks stuck to my sketchbook. Um, and I think it's, I'm pretty happy with it. This one cover, this then there are two different sheets of paper did better than this cover, um, but I am not unhappy in any way, shape or form. But it did let, let me know that different papers will respond to getting heavy gloss gel painted on top of them differently, which makes absolute sense. So I'm going to let this dry and then I will come back and uh, talk with you about this end result. I've set this under my ceiling fan on high for about, I want to say 20 minutes. So it is dry to the touch and it's not tacky, but based on the way the paper is a little buckly, I feel, and the fact that it's cool to the touch, I feel like it's not quite ready for another coat. I do plan to do two more coats on this. I would like it to really get thickened up, but I am really pleased with how this is turning out. Three coats of heavy gloss gel later, and the cover is amazing. It has a real, like I've been saying, vinyl feel to it. I may eventually also do that to the inside pieces, to the inside covers, 
but I really want to see, I want to wait first. I want to know, do I want to add something to this just like I did here? Because this is an open canvas and then I can protect it. I also went ahead and did the back cover. I really had no intention of adding anything to this, stickers, drawing or whatever. This paper with its organic feel with like, if you can see that there's grasses or whatever this handmade paper was made from. I really like it. So I wanted to maintain the integrity of that look on the outside. I'm leaving myself the option to make a decision here. Not entirely sure what I'll do. I still have time to think about that. That's heavy gloss gel, y'all. It can help you seal things uh, to make a cover, even one as wonky as this. I just love this. This, this is totally my kind of sketchbook. Very organic, very me, very all over the place. I love it. Mediums are really, really interesting things. There is not just heavy gloss gel, but there's also gesso and matte medium, gloss medium, glazing medium, GAC 100. GAC just stands for Golden Acrylic Company, I believe. <laughs> so it's not really gacky. It's not sticky at all. And then one of the recent ones I brought home, I haven't had a chance to take the label off or take the plastic off, is silkscreen medium. I have some ideas that I'd like to do with this. Acrylic mediums are not just for painting. They can be for all other kinds of art projects. And if you are interested in learning more about these kinds of things, learning more about what you can do with acrylic mediums outside of using them in painting, let me know and I will see what I can pull together to share with you on my YouTube channel. And um, thank you for watching. If you found this interesting, please like, share, subscribe, do all those wonderful things. It absolutely helps my channel. It helps it to grow. It helps me because this is a monetized channel. This is some way, this is a way that I make money for my family. So I really appreciate it when you like my videos and you share them with others that you think will absolutely enjoy what it is that I'm doing here on Have Color Will Travel. Have a wonderful and creative day and I will see you in the next video.